Guys, how we doing? Welcome to GoodWorks Tractors. Gonna go over some safety features, some tips as well that are found on your tractor. These are standard pretty much on most tractors these days. We're gonna go through them. Some of the front, some of the back, some of the hood, some are invisible, some you turn your tractor off, it won't turn on, you're wondering what the heck's going on, or you're driving your tractor and all of a sudden it shuts down. What the heck is going on? Let's figure that out. So while most of these items are gonna be pretty much unnoticeable or just, just kind of there and you don't have to worry about them. Some are a bit annoying. Some kind of have hacks that you guys have done on forums and everything else. I'm not gonna get into that. We'll leave that in the forums or you can put it in the comment below, but those kinds of overrides are not manufacturer recommended. What's that, Rose? Oh, yeah. yeah, I'll tell them. And Rosie says, give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button right down below. And as always, if you like what you see here, or if you're looking for a tractor or an attachment, maybe an accessory as well, read through that description right underneath the video or go to goodworkstractors.com, all sorts of information on there. Just for reference, we do have a John Deere 2025R tractor right there. In the middle, the big guy is a John Deere 5115M and over here, a Kubota L6060. What you have back here is gonna be called a PTO shield. You'll see it on the John Deere's, the Kubota's, pretty much every tractor that's out there anymore. It's a protective covering. You can see the PTO shaft that you have right down underneath here. It's pretty simple in design, and the reason that it's there is so that if you were reaching down for some reason, say you had a brush or a stick or something jammed in here, and somehow you're out here, this was wrapped, or this was spinning around, you put your sleeve around there. If it, all, if it catches on it, it's gonna pull your whole arm in, away goes your arm, bad news situation. So this is just meant to protect it and kind of keep it in close and safe and away from everything else. So to go along with that PTO cover is gonna be this sheath, this covering that's actually on the steel shaft. This whole plastic piece here is meant to just kind of almost hover in place. So when this part right here is connected to the back of your tractor, this black outside sheath basically isn't gonna move, but you can move the shaft inside there. That's gonna keep spinning around. And again, it's the same thing. You don't want your sleeve to get caught in there, your coat if it's hanging down, your pants, whatever it is, because, well, just take a look at that picture. I think that explains it all right there. Lots of times you're also gonna see these chains Many times, actually, these chains will go missing, but the intent is to clip this off to both the tractor side, one on the other end, clip it off to somewhere on the attachment side, just to, again, prevent this shaft, this sheath or cover from rotating around. You want it to be stationary, that way nothing gets twisted up in it. Next thing we're gonna talk about is a PTO kill switch, and that's gonna be for the mid PTO, so not every tractor is gonna have a mid PTO, so I'm just gonna have a rear, and this doesn't really apply. So if you have a brush hog on the back, for example, and you're just riding along and you back up uh, with a brush hog on the back, you don't have to worry about anything. However, if you are riding along, you got your belly mower on, and you go to back up, guess what? It's gonna kill the machine, it's gonna shut it down. It's a safety issue. Don't ask me why they only have it on the mid, not on the rear. I feel like if it applies to one, it should probably apply to both, but I know for you guys that find it annoying, you wish it didn't apply to either one of them. However, there is a bit of good news because there's a built-in override that I'm gonna show you how to use. Very easy, very straightforward. And in fact, check out another video as well. So if you wanna run an attachment like a, a chipper off the back of your tractor when you're not even sitting on the tractor at all, there's gonna be a procedure, not for every tractor. Some are not able to get it. I think it's uh, the 3E series comes to mind that you can't run a PTO chipper off the back if you're not on the seat. If you wanna see how to run your rear PTO when you're not sitting on the tractor seat, check out my chipper video that will post up above. So one of the more important safety features that are gonna be found on your tractor is actually a seat safety switch. It's gonna be found right underneath the seat and it's basically, if you don't have weight on that seat, it doesn't sense it, it's gonna kill the machine. It's not gonna let it move, it may even turn it completely off. It's totally intended just to prevent accidents or from the machine moving when you don't want it to. Now this can be frustrating or cumbersome, especially for uh, smaller, lighter weight individuals. Um, you know, I know a couple of my boys that are on here, if they're in the yard or if they're somewhere else and they're kind of bouncing around, they're light enough for actually 
their weight comes off the seat, it'll actually kill the machine right then. So even with the shorter legs, smaller statures, it can be a bit of an issue. I've seen some guys put override switches on here, other things to get around that. I really don't recommend it. I know it's an inconvenience, but if you can find another way, um, scoot the seat up, just switch your posture, maybe go a little slower to avoid the bumps, all that kind of thing is gonna help you out. It's just meant to keep you safe. Another time that this can be annoying is if you're out in the field, you gotta hop off the tractor really quick. If you put it in neutral, it's going to eliminate that need to turn the tractor off. It's gonna override the seat safety switch, but if you leave it in low or high range and you go to hop off the tractor while it's running, that's gonna kill the machine. So this safety switch right here on certain models of tractors, if it's in the winter time, your seat actually freezes up, it holds a little bit of moisture maybe, and it gets rock solid where it's not even gonna compress where it's gonna engage the safety switch. A couple ways to get around that, you can pull the safety switch right out, just some little clips in here, just kind of recess those pulled out and then put um, a clamp or a vise on it temporarily, just so you can at least get your machine inside or get it from point A to point B, or if you left it on a trailer overnight, that way you can at least move it, then just make sure you get it right back on here um, and get it back in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the tractor on. I'm gonna put it into range and then I'm gonna hop off the tractor seat. You'll see that the tractor is going to die. I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna put it in neutral, get it started up. I'm gonna put, leave it in neutral and then I'm gonna get off the tractor seat. And you're gonna see it still operates. Tractor died. Pretty much every tractor anymore is going to have what's called a rollover protection system. So on open station tractors, no cab, you're going to see a big black bar like this. Most of them are actually going to fold down. You'll see a hinge point right here. So if you need to fit it underneath a, a low overhead door, you can still do that. Or if you're mowing underneath trees, you can. it makes it a lot easier to navigate that way. However, for the most part, you want to have this in the upright installed position. For the most part, if your ROPS is in the up position, reference your manual, it'll tell you, keep your seat belt buckled, all right? However, if you have your ROPS bar folded down like what you see right here, they're gonna tell you not to wear your seat belt. Well, why is that? The thought behind that is if you have this in the down position, you don't wanna be trapped in here because then you're gonna get rolled over and rolled over and squished like a bug. You wanna be able to hop off the operator station as fast as possible. However, if you have it in the upright position, then you wanna make sure you're tucked inside that frame, that rollover structure there. So if it does tip over to the side, you're still within that footprint there and you won't get squished. If you do have a cab like what you see right here, this is considered to be a ROPS, a rollover protection system. It's built into the structure of the tractor itself. So rest assured, you still have that safety system in place. One other important thing I wanna point out about the ROPS, okay? And this is a really good example right here. You're gonna see various things, a canopy, a light, hydraulic bracket, all mounted here, not drilled into the ROPS, but bolted onto it with brackets, okay? These brackets all secure in place right here, but nothing drilling new holes in here. That's going to, number one, void the warranty on there, and two, it's going to lessen the uh, rigidity or the strength, the integrity of the ROPS structure. That's the last thing you wanna do when it's there to save your life. You will see certain locations on some of these ROPS bars that are gonna have pre-drilled holes or maybe where you could take advantage of utilizing um, a bolt hole that's already in there, but don't go creating any additional holes in your ROPS structure. You may be wondering what this big old hunk of steel is here filled with rocks on the back side of the tractor. This is a counterweight or a ballast weight. You want to make sure if you're using your front end loader in particular, you've got weight, adequate weight on the back side. So when you're picking up something up there, the back side does just want to lift off the ground and tip right over. Have plenty of counterweight on the back side here to offset what you're doing on the front. You can accomplish that many ways. I've done videos all about the subject, but a ballast box, liquid ballast in your tires, suitcase weights, a combination of all of the above more than likely is gonna be required. Not only can you tip over front to back, but you can also tip over and maybe even more dangerously side to side or laterally. So I have added dual wheels onto this tractor right here. Duals aren't available or at least readily available for every tractor size that's out there on the market, but for the 1025R or subcompacts in general, 
it is an available option. It's relatively cheap to do. I did so on here. You can also get wheel spacers that are gonna maybe just two inches or three inches on either side. They're gonna widen the footprint, widen the stance. You wanna get your center of gravity low, all right? So still fill them with liquid ballast, get wheel weights in there, that kind of thing. But those wheel spacers are gonna widen that footprint and really help you out. Another thing that you can do on a lot of tractors bigger tractors in particular you can see where the center hub here is bolted onto the outer rim these are called eight position wheels and so there's literally eight positions you can put these in to really widen the width of your machine or if you need to narrow it you can do that as well but something to keep in mind and even wheels that are not uh, bolted on or bolted together like what you see here are still going to have an offset rim meaning this center plate right here is not perfectly centered on the width of the rim. It's gonna be set off to one side so you'll have a narrow and a wide position so you can reverse those rear wheels to get a little bit more stability if you need to. No matter if you have a grapple on, it could be a bucket, it could be a set of pallet forks, whatever you are moving around, keep that literally as close to the ground as you possibly can. Don't go traveling around with the load up here or way up high. That is really going to increase the chances of a rollover accident occurring. Make sure you grab a load of brush, a log, a big old bale, a bucket full of dirt, a skid of something that you're moving. Just keep that load and carry it as low as you possibly can. I don't even care if it touches the ground from time to time unless it's going to cause damage. I would rather have it that low and secure and keep my center of gravity way down there versus risking an accident occurring. Not only that, but it's really going to help with visibility for the operator. You keep your grapple down low, the forks, the bucket. You can see a lot better what's going on around you. Definitely know about that around here at the shop. There's always uh, customers. You have Rosie. Sometimes my kids are out here. And of course, other guys working around. So it's good to have that visibility as well, keeping your load low. A feature I wish tractors had, and actually both of my real mowers do have on it, is called a tip meter or something along those lines. Basically, when you're driving along, it's a little scale. This kind of has degrees on there so you know when you're level and then when you're out of level and how far out of level you are. Because at a certain point, you're gonna reach that un uncomfortable zone where potentially you could tip it over. I really don't know what the tipping point is of tractors side to side, but I don't really wanna find out either. At least it gives you a visible kind of reference when you don't really know when you're on uneven terrain or going into a new area. You can take a quick look at it. You can see how far out of level you are. See if you need to get yourself back towards the level mark. So certain models of tractors or certain brands of tractors, it just depends on the size. There's not really a rhyme or reason that I found anyway. Do not need to be in neutral when you start them. Other brands or models do have to be in neutral in order to start them or you're dead in the water. It's not really a big deal. It's easy to do either way. However, I will say every time I start up my 4066, for example, when it's in range, I think, why am I allowed to do that on this machine, but not on a machine like a 2025R or a 1025R? I don't know. I feel like if it's good for one model, why isn't it good for another model as well? Another feature that's standard and I actually really like, especially when I'm out in a field in a bumpy area because it helps keep me nice and secure and stable in the operator station, is going to be a seatbelt. Pretty standard equipment anymore. Oftentimes these things never get used. I totally understand that, but if you are in bumpy conditions, they can really just help to smooth out your ride and keep it a little bit more convenient for you. On a tractor like this one right here, you've even got a buddy seat with his own seat belt as well. Look at that. If I only had a buddy. Something else that's pretty common, standard, on all these tractors these days, whether it's a Kubota, a John Deere, a small one, a big one, are going to be lights. Both headlights and hazard lights on the front and the back of your tractor. So this is great for nighttime conditions, if you're plowing, if you have to go down the road, whatever it is, you know, it could be a late summer night, could be an early winter night, but if you're in the dark, it's great to have that extra visibility without having to worry about adding on an additional rotating strobe light on top. At least you have some built-in safety there when you're going down the road. And as you can see right here, this is an additional harness that's in the back side of this 2025R. A lot of machines these days are going to come with something like this. At least one additional harness that's on the back side where you can add on some additional lighting if you want to. You see right here, this is uh, something all of us tractor owners love to have. You have a tractor, you want to have one of these. This is an SMV, a slow moving vehicle sign. Okay, it's a sign that when you're going down the road, you're going slow, so people better watch out and slow down. But standard equipment anymore, 
most tractors are going to have a bracket something like this if yours has gone missing it's got damaged whatever else you'll see most of them just have a little bracket there where you can either bolt it or you can just slide it right down into a little slot goes on there now take these off if you're going down the road because these have a tendency to fly off and disappear somewhere so that's the last thing you want that goes against the whole purpose of being safe right but they pull out uh, they install really easy no big deal right there smv slow moving vehicle sign every tractor is going to be equipped with some sort of a parking brake believe it or not right here which is actually very useful okay so if you're trailing equipment from point a to point b i use the parking brake all the time if i have it parked even on a slight incline of some kind i also find myself using a parking brake it's a great way to help make sure that bad boy doesn't go anywhere that you don't want it to i will say on the flip side it's probably the number one thing that i forget to release when i'm using my tractor i have engaged it got off the tractor done whatever i had to do got back on the tractor and got right back to doing what I'm doing, gone 15, 20 feet and wondered, why is the machine operating a little sluggishly? <laughs> and come to find out the parking brake's on. And a lot of these tractors have a little sign up here, a little symbol that says parking brake. You know, it's flashing, that kind of thing, so you should know better. But one of those things to look out for, that's an operator error. In fact, I've left that parking brake on by accident so many times on my 1025R that last spring I engaged the parking brake when I was rolling my lawn, got off to move a camera around to get a different angle and realized that parking brake wasn't holding my tractor. It was facing downhill and it was slowly creeping downhill. You can see it in the video, a bit of an unsettling feeling. So there's probably a tension or a, an adjustment I can make to kind of get it back to where it needs to be. But parking brakes are good. Just don't forget about them. If you want to get an all-encompassing list of safety features that are found on tractors, there'll be a link below in the description to where you can go to the USDA website and kind of go through, I don't know, it's 20 or 25 different features that are on tractors all about promoting safety. Well, hopefully you found that helpful. I realize it isn't the most entertaining topic, but it's good information to know. I'd really appreciate it if you consider giving me a thumbs up. If you have something to contribute, leave a comment down below about another safety feature or something you find helpful or maybe annoying too, and hit that subscribe button down there underneath the video. As always, if you're in the market for a tractor, an attachment, or an accessory, check out GoodWorksTractors.com or read through that description right down there underneath the video. A lot of places you're going to get 5% off and you can buy Manufacturer Direct. Well, until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Come on, Rose. Want a treat? Good girl. Let's go inside. <laughs>